All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. It's been a little while. We've been, man, we've just been busy. Uh, new project, as you can see in the background. Might have seen it in a couple videos, but guys, it's a 24 foot trailer. Uh, quick walk around on it. You know, got tired of kind of hauling all my stuff in somebody else's truck because my truck will be full of stuff. I can't drive my car around my truck. <clears throat> but I picked this up off Craigslist. It's got. 5200 it's like a 10,000 pound capacity or whatever it's got the heavier duty axle six lug all blacked out and the project we've been working on got it like this i washed it pulled some stickers off but um it's kind of a cheaper trailer you don't have to step up rv door which if you guys aren't new to trailers it's a lot better don't have that latch system has like a quick latch on the inside and outside instead of this latch there which is fine if you're inside of it i guess it's not bad Step up's kind of a pain in the butt, but we've been working on is the winch. Um, yeah, I put a winch in this thing. I got any lights in here or not? Of course not. Yeah, there it is. Put a winch in it from Harbor Freight. And, uh, put these extra tie downs in here too. Uh, battery box. I got it all done. I was just putting a charge on it just to make sure everything worked good. Hooked up to eBay. No, Amazon. Got the wireless remote, so works pretty good. Happy with that. A lot of work. Um, just a lot of little, like little work. You know, project don't sound big until you start on it. Uh, how I mounted it in here. Big C channel. As you can see, those tie downs are all the way through it, and it's some thick C channel. So, turned out good. Um, moved. This is the breakaway battery box. There's a little battery in here. Breakaway switch. That was like way up. Moved it down. <clears throat> Charged that battery, made sure it was good. It was good. Vinos, LED lights, black. That was pretty nice. They got to put bias plot. No, got rid of the bias plot and put drag radials on. No, not drag radials. In the drag racing today, but put regular tires on it and um, they're 10 ply E rated so that's good that helps out a lot with uh, with the riding of the road and not having blowouts we've ran by supplies before they're fine most of them are junk that's why everybody gets them on the trailers new because <laughs> they're cheap other than that get you caught up uh, survived the storms no big damage here had some rocks I had to move in the driveway it dug out about a foot deep channel because of all the water we got real quick. But it wasn't that bad. Buddy had a tractor, used it, box scrape. Pretty easy. Um, today's project, Cadillac, right? We got it running. Been running for about a week now. Haven't drove it nowhere. Like, these are my, if you guys haven't seen the channel, if you're new to the channel, these are my older wheels. Um, got them on there because I got the street tires on them, and that's the brand of them. They came with the uh, with the car when I had it. And the only reason I don't like them is because they kind of they rub a little bit. Get it in a spacer. You see the back here is a little bit spacer, like 1.5 mil, um, which ain't much, but it keeps away from the caliper. But in return, um, yeah, rubs a little bit when you have passengers. Those are the wheels that normally run, as of right now. Uh, that's the back, yeah, m and that's the rears. They're a little narrower. Uh, update the tow hook. Do have a tow hook. It is the eBay special or Amazon special for a Volvo like XC90. Works great, drives right in. 20 bucks. So there is the engine bay. I don't have the strut tower brace in right now. Uh, Main thing I'm waiting on right now is, as you can see, I'm running. I'm gonna be running a Mighty Mouse Wild oil catch can. I've been. I was working on was trying to modify. I had a K K K motors that came on the car, and I was working on making it kind of like the same style as the Mighty Mouse, where it uh, ventilates if it has pressure. But uh, I found a piece of valve to screw into the top, which was great. And it, you blow into it, and they relieved it at the top under vacuum. It uh, kept it all in the motor, you know, it sucked it through. That was fine. But then I started looking at the sizes of everything and they had a big fat fitting, but the threads were small, so it had no flow. When you blew into it, you could feel the restriction. It just 
not what I want. So I bit the bullet, 340 bucks. Uh, Mont Motorsport took me up. Uh, they got free shipping. If you don't know, I think it's over $250 free shipping right now. I think they have it most of the time, but bought a lot of stuff from them. So go check them out. If you guys are into Cadillacs or anything performance, they have uh, they have a lot of good stuff. Not sponsored by them, which I was. It'd be a lot better, but that's just how it goes. Uh, the guy I bought this car from bought a lot of stuff from them too. Like I know tanks from them, flex fuel sensors from them, upper pulley was from them. Um, I know there's a lot more stuff that he bought, but uh, luckily he bought all good stuff when I bought the car. Didn't have to mess with it. So today is project kind of wrapping all this stuff up. The, we got the new air intake tube, which love the way that fits versus the other tube I had. And everything that looks better. The only I'm concerned about is maybe this air uh, breather for the crankcase. You know, that connects, theoretically supposed to connect this to the little port that's down here. And it's kind of, kind of way up. Like I wish it was down below or whatever. It, it'll be fine, we'll make it work. Got a rag over it so no debris or nothing gets into there. Trying not to run it with uh, without a breather system. I do have the vacuum hooked up to the lower plate just to kind of get some pressure off of it. I just hate to blow out a seal doing something stupid. So we got relieved that way. Um, today we are mounting up, get the back seat out of it. Nobody knows how to do the back seat removal in these cars. You just pull up, it's got little hooks here. You pull the seat back, up, it comes right out. Uh, there's one, two, three, four nuts here. They're right there, they're 15 mil. And then up top here, you see this, the holes up here, the slotted holes, they have uh, 10 millimeter studs. And I got everything kind of piled up here, but that's the bottom, here's the top. So here's your studs for the top. Pull those out, back seat comes right out. No big deal. All that's accessible from uh, back side, right there, those slots is where it's at. So today we are mounting in fuel tank. I uh, got a built-in fuel pump in it, air motive regulator. It's a really nice unit. I got it off eBay and then had some things welded to it to make it the way I wanted it. It's not an eBay tank. It's actually nitrous outlet maybe. Uh, made for a battery relocation tank. And uh, it's really nicely made. It really is. It was just old and beat up. Got a good deal on it. Got the carpet out. That way I don't have metal shavings getting to the carpet and all that BS stuff. And uh, that's how I have my nitrous bottle bolted in. These are thread inserts. These are just studs. So if you don't want the nitrous in your car, you want to do a road trip, you just pull those out. It's nice and flat so you can pull your stuff in. You ain't got a stud sticking out. And then also makes it nice so you're not using bolts trying to find the hole through the carpet and all that. It makes it go in like super easy putting the carpet in. And it gives you a minimum hole, you know, works really good. All that wiring is for the heater and pressure sensor. Yeah, pressure sensor, bottle heater sensors right here. So, of course, you have all that wiring. But, uh, you know, I'll do a cool, quick um, show you how I put these thread inserts in. You can get them off eBay. Um, and you can get a tool <clears throat> that presses them in. That's also an option. Uh, which I have the tool and it sometimes works, sometimes it don't work as good. They don't have all the threads. The threads that you need, they don't have all that. So um, here's, I believe this is eBay or Amazon Prime, whichever mood I was in that day. Uh, this is the metric setup. These are stainless steel thread inserts. Um, pretty straightforward. So uh, how you put it in, drill a hole, of course, and then let me set you up here. Kind of give you an idea how I do it. Y'all crazy looking. Alright, so this feels all this table space and you never have enough room, right? So thread insert. Um you just screw it on. This is a bolt, same thread. This is a nut. And you can use any nut you want. You kinda want you don't want the thread on. First person that I've seen do this, they use a bolt that threaded on, a nut that threaded onto the bolt. It don't work good. You don't want to do that. You want that's loose, uh, preferably like a nice flat bottom. If you have a flat, um, you know, if you have a fly inch head nut, that's even better. First, you just thread it on there. I usually just thread it on where it come out the bottom, and then put it in the car, and then you tighten this bolt up. 
and then it will actually mush. So while this gets tightened up, it'll mush where it's ridged right here. It'll actually mushroom the bottom to the top. Thread rivet, that's what they're called. I call them thread inserts, but they're really thread rivets. It kind of makes like a rivet. It put mushrooms this to here, pinches what's ever in between. Makes it really nice. Um, the downside is you have a lot of extra sticking out the bottom. You know, I guess it ain't no more than a nut worth, but um, I'll show you how it works here in a bit. I've already got one. We're running these studs here um, that I got. Come on, phone. Come on, camera. Anyways, running these studs here, they're uh, M8 by 1.25, I believe. And it came in a kit from Vance Auto, I think. I don't know, there's a Dorman part number, 3411. But it came with these nuts here, which are flange nuts, which are great, but they're, uh, they've been mushed. As you can see, the triangle on top been mushed, and that makes them lock nuts, which is not good if you don't want to really tighten these studs up. You just want them kind of loose in there. So you can remove them by hand, be real easy, or you can use a wrench. But if you have this kind of nut, uh, it's gonna be a pain in the butt. So that's about it for that. I'm gonna set you guys up here. I've already got one of these things in here. Uh, see down there in the corner. Got one right there already put in. So I'm gonna mark my other one, drill it, and drill the hose. Um, good news is we got spot. Uh, Rockingham, yeah, we got a spot for the private track room in Rockingham, North Carolina. I think it's on the 18th, is what it says online. Um, been trying to get that spot for a little while. Finally got a guy who canceled out, bought his spot today, yesterday, bought it yesterday. Talked to my tuner yesterday. Make sure we're gonna have time to get the car all dynoed out, get it tuned so I can go racing, because he's actually going racing down there too. Steven with uh, SS LSX out of Concord, or Kannapolis, North Carolina. Awesome guy. Um, he don't need to work, that's for sure. He's busy all the time, he does good work. Good work speaks for itself. He don't advertise, I advertise for him free because he's awesome. Um, he's gonna be down there. He said he'd get my car maybe next week, so we gotta, we gotta get this tank in, get the lines ran. I gotta put about 500 miles in this thing this weekend. So that's what the goal is. Today is Tuesday, so by Monday I gotta put about 500 miles on it. So might be doing a trip to the mountains or the beach or something just to rack them up, but uh, I usually drive a lot, but. Not this week, I don't really have big plans. So I'll set you up here and see if we can't get an idea how this system works. All right, so first thing is we're just gonna mark this thing where it needs to be. All right, so the battery died. So you're probably at a different position as you were. But we're still in the process here. So, got the bolt. We showed you in the counter over there. And uh, with the thread insert or thread rivet. And we're just gonna drill this thing out until it fits. Get that one in there right there. With this, we're gonna try to get it to be, I'm gonna put it in and then I'm gonna bend it, which is really good about these thread inserts. Usually you can do this, we'll see. So, let's see. Oh yeah, you can see it all. We got in the hole, got the impact, got the socket on the impact, which seems to work pretty good. Now you just hold the, the nut with a wrench Should be pretty mushed. And it feels pretty good in there. Yeah, so that's how it should look. This is all mushed flat. And you can see a ridge inside. You know, you see a ridge inside here, which means it's mushed. Hold all that up. So that's how that works. So I'm gonna blow it out. We'll put the tank on there and see how that looks.
But that's how it's gonna look in there. I put it way far forward. First off, nitrous ball is going over here. Second off, at one time I'm gonna wanna at least have a spare tire in this thing, which you can get the kits for. And so I didn't wanna give all that space. I'm not running a cold tank in the trunk. I got that little one right at the hood. And bolting it to this uh, plastic or fiberboard cover here. If you're ever in a wreck, you don't want your nitrous bottle or your fuel tank to come loose in the trunk back here and bounce around and this cause a hectic, you know, of a mess. I know it'll be less to worry about if in that situation, I know that might be your least amount of worries, but that could cost you life. That thing catches on fire or a bottle gets loose and hits you. I mean, those bottles, they get loose and get punctured, they have a lot of pressure. So that's why I directly mounted mine all to metal, all to the, all to the, the car. That way I ain't gotta worry about, you know, if something like that does happen, always prepare for the worst, right? But that's about it, really. Um, yeah, update on hopefully dino times next week. So hopefully we'll have another video with that coming. Uh, with this, I just wanted to show you the thread insert kind of process that we're going through. All that tank is going to do is it's got a fuel pump inside of it and it's feeding uh, AN6 right here. Got that rearing at the car, right to the nitrous uh, solenoid. And how I had it hooked up last time was from here to here as it comes with the kit. The nitrous outlet comes with a crossover tube that does all that. It's a different fit in here. But um, if you spray a lot or you spray a hard hit, um, spray it anytime. The car has an on-demand fuel pressure system. So what that means is not regulated by a regulator. It has a fuel pressure control module that controls the fuel pressure. So as it's needed, as it sees it drops, it creates, it creates more fuel pressure by ramping up the voltage. Downside of that is when that solenoid hits, you're wide open. You've already got the demand on the system pretty hard. So you're wide open using all the fuel. Then you increase the fuel demand by opening up that nitrous fuel switch or fuel solenoid and you're gonna have a lean spike and that's what I had when I was doing all my testing was had a lean spike uh, and it didn't even out. I mean I jetted it and did all the stuff like it's supposed to and air fuel ratio was great once it after the hit initial hit was lean which makes a lot of power but it's also really hard in your engine and with the new mods I got I'm really thinking I'm probably gonna run out of pump I got two Deech Works 300 C's I believe in it and uh, I believe they're the C's yeah and um they should be enough for all motor, but on nitrous like that, the extra demand is gonna be, it's not gonna happen, not E85. So we put a secondary tank in there, run an AN6 line up there. Now you can run E85 in that tank, you can run uh, 116, or whatever you wanna run in there. You know, you run race fuel, run whatever you want. Um, Got separate tank, so you, you know, fuel might be $10 a gallon, but you're not gonna use a lot of it, cause it's only gonna be used through the nitrous system, not through the actual uh, main fuel engine, main fuel for the engine. So that's also nice. Plus you can dial it pretty good because you can adjust fuel pressure on, on the fly if you want. Instead of rejecting, you just adjust fuel pressure, richen it up, lean it out, whatever you want to do. Uh, small increments. Um, of course you want to jet if you're doing anything big, but having some dedicated fuel system, you can kind of tune that a little bit better. Um, that's about it really. That's why I went this way. Um, should be pretty good. So aiming for like 900 wheel on spray, like around seven on motor. We'll see how it does. Car made like five, you watched that other video, but it made like 580 or something. Old setup without the cam. So cam, I'm looking to gain 100 horsepower at the tire from a cam and a different intake. My old intake was pretty small. This new four and a half inch intake is supposed to gain like 30 or 40. I don't know, it does, it's supposed to gain a lot. We'll find out. Um, plus I found two flaked rings. So top rings were flaked. So I was probably a little bit low on compression on those cylinders. And that might be why I was a little bit down. And we're running out of fuel at the stock pump at 580 for some reason. Some of you guys out there get um, a lot of power out of your stock pump. I guess mine were just weak. Something was up with them. Uh, just running out of fuel pressure. We even cheated it by cranking the duty cycle up. This, it wasn't there. On E, it would not do it. So that's it. Anyways, subscribe, stick around. I'll see you guys in the next video, which hopefully will be this week uh, or beginning of next week. But thanks for watching.